Hi, Jared from Photo to Canvas here, and today we're talking about rendering intent. So if you've ever printed artwork, photograph, whatever, on a decent printer, your driver is gonna give you the option of rendering intent. Now there's usually four options, only two of them regularly are used, relative color metric and perceptual. This can get kind of complicated, but the basic idea is pretty simple. So I'm just gonna give you a quick run through on the basic concept. And if you stay tuned till the end of the video, I will tell you the settings that I use when I'm printing. Beside me, I have two color gamut charts. These are printed in Adobe RGB, and each chart shows sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto RGB. The triangles represent what colors can be shown in those gamuts. Now relative color metric and perceptual are different ways of dealing with the colors that are out of gamut. So if you're printing in Adobe RGB, the blue triangle, what happens with colors outside of that blue triangle if they are contained in your image? So relative color metric, everything within the triangle here is going to stay the same and the colors outside of that gamut are gonna get shifted to the nearest color within gamut. This makes relative color metric best for images that most of the colors are in gamut, or images such as artwork, where yeah. the main colors of the image are very important that they remain accurate. These greens in the tips of the Adobe RGB color space. Now that green is what it's actually supposed to look like. Keep in mind that your computer screen is probably gonna only show you the sRGB color space. So even if we go down in there, that green is a bit different than that green. So if we have a painting with a lot of that green in it, I wanna maintain that green. But when you get up into Adobe, those, those greens are really quite a bit different. And that is what the actual green should look like. In this image, it's shifted because I printed it in Perceptual. Now Perceptual, that's gonna scale everything. That's gonna shift all the colors in the image to be in gamut. So it's gonna equally squish them together. If you have a color out here, it's gonna shift everything until that color is within gamut. In relative color metric, if you have a color out here, it's gonna shift just that color. But these ones are gonna stay the same. So in perceptual, it's better if a lot of colors are out of gamut. And rather than having this funky stuff here and there that just looks weird, it's gonna shift everything to make it all look right together, collectively. Now keep in mind, when you soft proof or you use software to look at what colors are out of gamut, you're not often gonna find a ton of colors. Very, very saturated greens, some blues, some violets, that's pro photo. And with Adobe RGB, you're gonna get some yellows, some reds, but you'd be surprised if you do a gamut check on your images in soft proofing, how few colors are actually out of gamut. So in perceptual, if you have few colors out of gamut, just a couple, it's gonna change everything and you don't want that. So for me, it's very quick and easy. If I'm printing artwork, because I photograph a lot of artwork, I use relative color metric because I want the main colors of the piece to stay as they should be. I do not want anything to shift when I'm trying to get very specific color matching done in reproduction of an image. If I'm printing photos, I stick with perceptual because it just shifts everything. It keeps everything looking natural together. Now, yes, you may occasionally have an exception to that. So you might have to bounce back and forth and, and test. You can do some of this in soft proofing, but personally, I don't find soft proofing super effective except for just showing me what colors will be out of gamut. And if there's a lot, then I might do a test print. So I hope this made what can be a very confusing subject a little bit simpler. If it was helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.